everybody. Today we have a, a special guest from Germany, just coming from Bangkok on his way back to Germany. Today with us is uh, Jimmy Schulz, one of the leading internet experts from Germany, a former liberal MP and also the founder of a liberal think tank with the name which the name is Load, which exclusively deals with all things related to the internet and beyond. First of all, Jimmy, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for taking your time. You're welcome. Um, we usually have, when we talk about privacy online, there's one standard argument usually that always comes up at one point in the debate. And it more or less goes like, why are you so afraid about privacy online if you have nothing to hide? What is your standard reply to this kind of argument? Well, I hear those, this argument quite often and I say to all those people, yes, everyone's got something to hide. And even if you think you don't have something to hide, well, I do have and others do have. And if you force us because you just think uh, that you don't have something to hide, you can't force me that I have to think the same way. That's one question, uh, one answer. The other answer is, well, everyone's got something to hide. Um, if not, everyone would, ru would run around naked. And talking about privacy, when you say that everybody has something to hide eventually, uh, quite important personal data, for example, what is the one good means or the one good tool to keep your data safe, especially online? Well, two answers here. Um, if you ask for the easy and for the most reliable uh, way to encrypt or to, to protect your data, well, the, the most uh, effective way to protect your data online is don't digitalize it, don't put it online. Then there's no um, danger there. This might be not practical uh, in, in any means, but um, if you want to if you want to save, uh, well, protect your data uh, efficiently, um, encrypt it with a safe encryption system, for example, PGP, pretty good privacy, is a, uh, such a very, um, very liable uh, encryption system for emails and for data. If you just want to encrypt your data uh, on your hard disk, on your USB stick, and in the cloud, use Veracrypt, which is the standard application for that. Which both are freeware, you can download them yes, from they're... reliable sources online, it's for free. And, and they're open data. source, so the, the source code, the uh, origins of the software can be, can be uh, uh, reviewed and it's proven secure. Talking a little bit more about security, nowadays everybody has a smartphone and is using messengers. When it comes to the security of messengers, which would be the one that you would recommend? Well, there are a couple, a couple of uh, messengers I use, which I all could recommend with special features. I uh, would, well, the one I use most at the moment is Wire.com. Um, it's a Berlin-developed, uh, Swiss-based Swiss company. Uh, open source, uh, open, uh, even the server software is open source, so you can deploy your own infrastructure for the whole network, which is quite nice feature. Um, it is uh, um, a free software, it uh, uses a proven uh, encryption method and it's, um, well, the big advantage is it doesn't grab your, your, your address book, which is even by inc secure encrypted messengers, for example, the market leader, the, the disadvantage is there that they grab every time you log in the whole address book and I don't like that. With Wired you don't have that, you can turn this feature on if you want to but you don't, as a default, you don't, uh, well, don't give away your address data and the addresses of all your contacts which is uh, in fact a big problem. And I like Wired because it has uh, the feature of multi-device uh, availability so you can have 10 smartphones uh, parallel with uh, synchronized data. A lot of people use several smartphones, for example, two smartphones, and you have uh, well uh, synchronized data. Yeah, they have an, a macOS client and a Windows client and a web client, which are all synchronized with your uh, mobile data. So this is a really nice thing. I like that. 
I could recommend Freema, which is uh, more established, has more users, is a nice thing, works very well, but just on one phone, and a web interface. Okay, thank you. Coming back to, to encryption, um, usually when we have this debate, at one point, uh, when we talk about that encryption guarantees free speech, or it actually not, not necessarily guarantees free speech, but at least it gives you a lot more opportunities to to, uh, to go online and to express yourself. But at one point there's also the discussion about national security. Because there were not only good guys who use encryption, there were also some kind of bad guys who use that. What, what, what do you think, how should, a, how should a state, how should a society balance, on the one hand, privacy and free speech, and on the other hand, the desire for national security? Well, I know this is not an easy uh, discussion uh, because, of, of course, uh, the states uh, have an interest in security of their, uh, of their people. Um, and they do have the right to secure um, the state interest. On the other hand, every mean which attacks, well, uh, um, um, affects everyone has a big issue because even those people are affected who have well not are not suspicious haven't done anything are not terrorists are not uh, criminals or anything like that so the means that a state could take is only on a well on a basis that there is a suspect or something is suspicious in a special case and a judge has to uh, uh, accomplish that okay this this number, this email, this device can be tapped. Um, all other uh, means that, for example, uh, data retention, which, which uh, F, well, is the, uh, the storage of all uh, contact information of, uh, of every phone call, every email sent uh, in, in your country, affects everyone and is not acceptable. The problem here is also that, well, international terrorism Criminals, organized criminals, um, of course, know how to protect themselves from such uh, observation methods. So, who are we are uh, uh, targeting? If we we don't tar can't target them, um, the fourteen-year-old downloading illegal music, um, and I don't think that this is um, the way we should treat our own people. Coming back to a much broader topic, uh, the topic of digitalization is maybe the hottest topic or the hottest political topic nowadays uh, all around the world. And there are usually two topics where experts say that digitalization has a, a disruptive impact. One is education, our whole education system, how we organize mm -hmm. our education system, how we run the education system. And the other one, which is probably closely related to it, is the future of jobs, the future of the economy. Um, what is your take? Because there are a lot of different opinions out there saying that, that digitalization is actually too disruptive, so it will take away jobs which are needed. There are other persons who say, actually, it's a, it's a, it's a huge opportunity. What is your take on this? I'm an optimist, so I'll take option number two. Um, no, it's, uh, coming back to education, it's the basis. We have to educate our children and our youth to get uh, to be competent in the area of, of new media, uh, the internet, and, and the digital revolution. For just one example, we, we still learn in school how a steam machine works. Do we learn how the, the backbone of our actual society works, the internet? Does anyone know what a DNS is, how an IP address is set together, um, how routing f works really? All these, well, well technical um, knowledge has to be taught in school. That's the one side. The other side is, well, um, the, the point is how we use the net and um, how, for example, social networks are working, how the interaction, communication changed so much. How do you um, check an information provided by Wikipedia? In former times, you were looking into a, um, a, a lexicon. Um, 
now you look up everything in Wikipedia, but who's checking Wikipedia? Do you learn in school how to prove if this is a fact or an alternative fact? So I think we have, we have to teach our youth both the technical foundation of the backbone and how to use it. Um, let's, let's, uh, so far to, to education, the jobs will be, uh, of course, um, the, 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 the danger of losing lots of job frightens a lot of people. And uh, we have to deal with that, ang uh, with that fear, and we have to deal with the fact that there might be a loss of jobs. But we had that with every technical revolution. How many blacksmiths do you have in India still? How many blacksmiths do you have in Germany? How many were there 200 years ago? So every revolution kills jobs, of course. But looking to Germany, in fact, do we have more jobs than 100 years ago? Yes, we do. Do we have better jobs? Yes, we do. Do we have better paid jobs? Yes, we do. Is everyone in the society, do we have a society with a lot of more welfare nowadays? Yes, we do. So I don't think we have to fear the future. It's just another um, anxiety that, that they, people who are always anxious about well, technology, new technology, revolutionary, because a lot of things will change, yes. And uh, we will lose a lot of jobs and we have to take care that these people don't fall off and behind and be, be uh, back. Uh, well, we, we have to help these people to find new jobs or let society help them to, to cover the hardness. Thank you very much, Jimmy Schulz. Thank you for taking your time. Thank, Thank you for you. being with us today. And uh, we hope to uh, welcome you soon again to uh, Incredible India. Thank you. Thank you.